All right. Hello, everyone. What's up? It's me again. Uh, coming at you today with a day four update for my Necro Dot Chthonic Fissure Warlock. Um, I have successfully taken this character to a level 100, so pretty happy about that. This is actually my, my first level 100 character ever in Last Epoch, so, you know, it felt pretty good to get that achievement. And this is probably going to be the final video I make on this build. Um, not because I don't like the build, but because I really want to play different builds now and like learn more about like different kinds of builds in this game. So the next build I'm going to be playing is like some low life marrow shards lich thing that I theory crafted. Um, hopefully it's good, but yeah. But anyway, I wanted to make this video as like half day four update and half like build guide video. Um, I don't know how qualified I am to make like a build guide video because, you know, if this is like the first real build that I played, so I don't really have like a reference point to like compare things to. And I'm also not sure if this is like super optimal, but this is like the best thing that I came up with for this archetype. And I wanted to share, you know, my findings on this build. So this build, you know, I've been able to get to level 100 without too many issues. It can do monoliths up to like 300 corruption pretty, you know, pretty well. And this build is also able to do uh, tier 4 dungeons, although I, 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 I usually, I still die a couple times when I do tier 4 dungeons, mostly because of the lack of defense, but the damage is definitely there to do it. Um, it's just sometimes the dungeons have like hard mechanics that this build has a difficult time handling because a lot of the defense of this build is Ghost Flame. And without Ghost Flame, your defenses is kind of low. So yeah, I've ha I have had some defensive issues, but you know, everything else is fine. And you know, I can do tier four dungeons in, in a couple tries. I don't know if that's good or not, but yeah. So let me just show you guys like some end game gameplay and then I'll talk about, you know, how this build works and everything. So uh, here I have, I want to do uh, the boss of Blood, Frost and Death, Empowered Monolith. This is 133 Corruption. Um, I, I did end up resetting a lot of Corruption to level faster, so that's why it's low. But I'll just show you guys like a Monolith boss and then a normal echo, and then we'll do like uh, the lich as well, or whatever this thing is called. The uh, gaze of Oribus, dude. All right, so let's do this. So this build is essentially uh, just generic necro dot with uh, torment and dam scaling. So here I'll just do this. And as you can see, the damage is pretty decent. Just make sure to keep up Ghost Flame for defense and offense. Make sure to press the skills. I'm actually not sure if this damage is considered like good or not. Because again, this is the only build I've played. Yeah, you know, you can do like content like this basically without any issue. Oh, nice spell damage for curses. Uh... Okay, cool. So that's that. Uh, anything good here? Nope, it's fine. Okay, then we'll do a lich or is this a lich? What is the technical name for this? Gaze of Oribus. I don't even know. Get that corruption. So, Wandering Spirits, Fissure, Transplant to apply Bone Curse, and then Ghost Flame. Oh, it's a Shade. Alright. So, I guess I'm doing a Shade of Oribus right now. I'm doing a Shade. Whoa. Yep, that's that. And then 
I'll just run like a normal thing to show y'all. So nice, 200 corruption. Uh, okay, I don't know, just farm random shit, I guess. So yeah, that, that's the bossing gameplay. Basically activate wandering spirits to get mana, fissure, transplant to apply bone curse, and then ghost flame for survivability and to apply decrepify. And in mapping, uh, basically I just use ghost flame to move around, use wandering spirits to not run out of mana, and that's about it. And as you can see, between haste and ghost flame, you can actually move around reasonably quickly. Like, I have 122% move speed with everything up, as you can see right there. So, you know, if, it feels pretty nice to map around with this build. Should probably fix my loot filter. But yeah, that's basically normal monolith gameplay. Uh should probably not show so many items. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um okay, so that's basically it. Um Okay, so now to talk about, you know, this like now moving on to like the build guide portion of this video. So, okay, so there's like a lot of complicated mechanics in this build. I'm going to do my best to just like summarize everything. So the main idea of this build is to uh, scale the damage over time with Chthonic Fissure. And Chthonic Fissure uh, has two ways to deal damage over time. It has a curse called Torment, which deals damage but it has only one stack, but it has a lot of damage effectiveness. And then there's another ailment called Damned, which is also Necrodot, but it, and it lasts an unlimited number of uh, stacks. So this can like stack up infinitely. So ideally you wanna take things that scale both Torment and Damned. So Grim Tide is like really insane because it scales every single ailment, including Torment and Damned, that Chthonic Fissure applies and also it scales the damage of chthonic fissure because chthonic fissure also deals damage right the 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 fissure deals fire damage over time to enemies on top of it so this grim tide uh is like a perfect example of like what you want to take because it scales everything from chthonic fissure and then in addition you can take uh, Twisted Waves to scale Torment damage, and then also Tomb Gorger to further scale the Torment damage. And then getting Spirit Frequency also increases all your damage as well, because more Spirit Frequency means more stacks of Damned, which is scaled by Grim Tide. And then this allows you to have um, two Fissures, which is mandatory, and the rest is just like Travel Nodes, basically. Oh, and then you also have Severed Wards here which allows you to shred, which is nice. So that's the main idea of the skill. Um, and then because you're a warlock and warlocks deal more damage per curse on the target, in addition to having more armor and less damage taken per curse on target, you want to get a bunch of curses. So then bone curse is perfect because bone curse is a curse. And it also applies a curse called marked for death which is, uh, it reduces all res by 25%. So this bone curse gives you a lot of extra damage for this build. And we're automating the bone curse using transplant, um, cast bone curse around target location on arrival. And then the way that you build bone curse, that, the way that I built bone curse was to just build it for utility. So obviously marked for death, convert to necro for a little bit more damage and then Brittle Bones for the 12% uh, culling strike. 
And it's also important to note that Bone Curse doesn't actually deal damage itself in this build. Like, you can convert it to Necro to deal a little bit more damage, because, like, why not? But the Bone Curse, at the end of the day, only deals, like, 300 damage per hit. Whereas the Fissure deals, like, 5,000, you know, like, ticks. So the Bone Curse is not scaled for damage. It's mostly for uh, utility, applying Marked for Death, uh, giving the 12% kill threshold, and then applying Chill and also applying bleed. And this bleed is um, kind of important because uh, the node Tomb Gorger uh, is, it, you have to have the enemy ignited, poisoned, or bleeding. And Ghost Flame can ignite, but then you have to be on top of the enemy. So I think it's good to take uh, Cloven Flesh because that would guarantee that, you know, no matter where you are on the screen, as long as the enemy is bone cursed, which they will always be because it has infinite duration, uh, they will basically always be perma bleed because Chthonic Fissure has very high like spirit frequency and hit rate. And if the enemy is always bleeding, you always have this Tomb Gorger more damage multiplier up. Another way you could make this work is by getting Ignite Chance on your weapon, but but then that's like an extra mod that you have to take, which is annoying. Like, if you just happen to have it on your weapon, that's great. But otherwise, I think it's better to craft your weapon for damage and then just go for the bleed chance here. But if you did manage to get, like, ignite chance on your weapon, then you could, you know, take these points off and put it into, you know, maximum chill chance for utility, I guess. But it doesn't really matter. You can also... It's also interesting to note that... Um, uh... Oh, never mind. Ne never mind. Chthonic Fissure also doesn't ignite. It does fire dot, but it's not ignite. You can make it ignite, but eh. yeah, it's just the most efficient to get it here. This bleed chance for Tomb Gorger. Okay, so we basically covered Chthonic Fissure. We covered Bone Curse for the utility and damage, and then uh, Transplant is mostly just for utility as well. Um, applying Bone Curse on hit, and then also giving you mana every time you use it, and then a little bit of defense from bone armor, and then just reduce the cooldown as much as you can. Then, the f then uh, skill number four is Ghost Flame. And this is probably the most important skill in this build. Um, just without the skill, you have no movement speed and you have no defense. So this skill is like the, the thing that holds this build together, in my opinion. So... Uh, when you channel this, you get a huge amount of movement speed, 50% uh, to be exact. So, yeah, I'm getting exactly 50% movement speed when I'm channeling this, which allows you to, you know, move around really fast in monoliths, and also, you know, dodge attacks from bosses because of, you know, moving fast. And you can also take nodes to give yourself... 40% uh, damage uh, less taken, and if I had more points, you could also put it here to get dodge. And right now, my dodge is like only 29%, but if I put three more points into this dodge node, then my dodge would go up to 75%. But I just didn't happen to have any plus level to Ghost Flame, so I was not able to get that maxed out, unfortunately. But, you know, definitely good if you can. So the main idea is you just move really fast while channeling Ghost Flame, get a bunch of DR, get a bunch of dodge, reduce the channeling cost as much as you can using this node here, and also four idols that reduce the mana efficiency of Ghost Flame, or increase the mana efficiency of Ghost Flame. And then you also go down here to take uh, this node, which gives you Decrepify, which is a curse, which causes you to deal more damage, um, in addition to getting the Warlock Curse Synergy, which is more damage, and then less damage taken, and then more armor as well. And Decrepify also deals a little bit of damage in itself, and it lasts for 10 seconds. So, this is like a really good damage multiplier, like it just allows you to deal a good amount of more damage. So, yeah. And then also, the Ghost Flame does do a little bit of damage in and of itself. Um, it doesn't do that much compared to Chthonic Fissure, 
but it does do a little bit. So in an ideal scenario, you have Fissure that's like hitting a target and you're like ghost flaming and hitting the target as well, like this. But you don't have to because Chthonic Fissure does way more damage than Ghost Flame in this build. So you can actually just like drop the Fissure and then just like Ghost Flame somewhere random like this and you still get all the defensive buffs and the Fissure does most of the damage. So it's kind of cool and weird because like you don't need to be you don't need to be hitting the enemy with Ghost Flame to deal damage. But you can for like a little bit more damage, which is interesting. Um, and then the final skill in this build, um, I ended up using Wandering Spirits. And I basically use this skill just as like a mana potion, like a super delayed mana potion. And by taking Infused Souls and Eternal Haunt, I can reveal a lot of spirits and then have them expire, which will give me mana. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to like press Wandering Spirits and then I'll Ghost Flame around. And then my spirits will expire and you can see my mana just go up like you can see my mana just go up there and it'll just like keep going up like this as you can see so i basically channeled this for like 15 seconds just now and my mana didn't even go down wandering spirits ghost flame and again like you can see the the, the mana recovery is pretty good and they just continue to expire and give me mana so that's like a huge amount of mana sustain and you don't even have to spam it, because if you take this node here, they last for longer. The, the spirit reveal duration goes up, and also your cooldown goes up. So you only have to press it like once every, I have 13.8 seconds, right? So you only press it like once every 13 seconds, and it just passively gives you mana over time, which is pretty nice. And again, this, that skill is, this skill is not meant to do damage, it's just meant to give mana. That's all it does, just give mana. So then, you know, in mapping, I just press this at the start of the map, and then I can, you know, use my damage ability, and then Ghost Flame to move around, and it just makes my mana sustain feel really good. And then also when I'm in bosses, um, Wandering Spirits also helps keep my mana up, which means that I can Ghost Flame more, and if I Ghost Flame more in bosses, it means my chance to die goes down because, you know, all my defense is tied to Ghost Flame, basically. Yeah. And that's basically it, you know, just Chthonic Fissure, Ghost Flame, and then Wandering Spirits Transplant for mana, and then Bone Curse from Transplant, and that's it. And then for the passives, um, I'm not going to go into detail about all these things because, you know, a lot of this is just, you know, you can just like copy it. But I will put a planner in the description of this video so you guys can see exactly what I have here. Um, the main idea is you put 20 points in Acolyte and then the rest into Warlock. Um, most of these skills just offer like very straightforward benefits that you can see for yourself. Um, the most important nodes though, I would say the most important node is actually Fleeting Crone. Like this node like allows you to raise your movement speed from like 85% to like 125%. I think this node is the most valuable node in the entire, uh, you know, in the entire skill tree, basically. Like, without this node, your movement speed is just really bad. And taking this node allows your movement speed to not be bad. So no, that's the most important thing right here, Fleeting Crone. And then after that, the most important thing is probably uh, Anguish. Because Anguish is another curse, which again has synergy with Warlock more damage, armor, and DR. So getting this Anguish Curse is also, you know, really good. And then after that, the most important nodes is just like flat damage. So like Dustbringer gives you 18 flat damage. And then uh, Unholy Torment also gives you flat damage, very important for damage. And then after that, you can get a little bit of multi for scaling Grim Tide. Uh, this is Grim Tide. And then you get a little bit of cast speed, which is very nice here. And a little bit of more damage and less damage taken while channeling to make the ghost flame scaling even more good. Then the rest of it is just like, you know, damned chance, attributes, 
Int vet, necro res, a little bit of mana, a little bit of ward stuff. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, yep. And then for the gear, again, like most of my most of my gear here is just like random whatever shit. Um, all this will be in the planner. Um, but the main idea is there's like a couple of attributes that you just want on all your items, and those are uh like in priority, like necro res, increased damage over time, necro damage, spell damage. And you just want like those item those mods just generically everywhere, and then uh, crit multi is probably the most important like primary one that you want to scale, because crit multi scales every like every source of damage, so you want to scale that like through the roof if you can. So like in my build I have like 200 crit multi above cap, which is 200% more damage multiplier. So you want to get crit multi for sure on the amulet. And on the relic, on the catalyst, and also on the wand. You want to get crit multi on all those sources. And then just necro res to scale the uh, twisted waves torment damage per necro res. And also necro res gives you more ward from blown comer barbute. And then on the body armor, you can get um, chthonic fissure level and also chthonic fissure frequency which helps your damage a lot. And that's basically it. And then if you can get Necro Pen on the weapon and the amulet, that's really good. I did not get Necro Pen on the amulet, but I should. And then if you can just like get a little bit of random cast speed, it does help out. You don't need cast speed to deal damage on single target, but cast speed helps the fissure come out faster, which makes mapping feel a lot better. Like, as you can see, my fissure cast time is, like, pretty good. And also, cast time, uh, having cast speed makes it so that your wandering spirits cast faster, transplant cast faster, ghost flame starts channeling faster, and everything. So, like, having a little bit of cast speed is nice if you can get it, but, you know, maybe not mandatory. And then just a little bit of crit avoidance, and the rest is just res. Um... My gear right now is not perfect. I could make it a lot better if I had like uniques with LP, but I just didn't happen to get any good uniques with LP. So I'm just mostly sticking to like three, four mod rares for now. And I could invest more into making my gear better, but I also kind of just want to play a new build right now. So yeah, this is basically where I'm going to leave this build, I think. And I am a little bit salty that I didn't get a good uh, Bone Clamor Barbute. I have dropped a couple of these with like one LP, but the rolls were really bad. So like I ended up just using this one because it has a maximum roll of Int and also a very high roll of Necro Res. But ideally I would have like one of these with LP and I would love to put flat spell damage to curses on it. Like, if I made one like this, I'd be very happy, because that would increase my damage by, like, 50% more if I had this. But I just didn't get lucky enough to make that helmet. So, yeah, my damage is, like, not exactly optimal right now, but it is what it is. And then, yeah, and then again, for the idols, I basically just have, like, four mana efficiency with Ghost Flame, so I can keep up my damage and defense. And then I have some Necro Res Vitality. And I would have two more Necro Res Vitality ones, but I needed Cold Res, so I have two Cold Res just because I wasn't able to cap it with gear. But ideally, that would be Necro Res Vitality. And that's basically it. That's the build. Uh, yep. Pretty happy to take this character to level 100. Um, so yeah, it's probably going to be my final update video on this build. Uh, planner will be in the description. Uh, sometimes I stream on Twitch if you want to check it out. And I guess, you know, on to the next build. <laughs> yep.